Okay. Hey guys, this is Trunchy back again to bring you another video. Um, this time, I'm finally, I know I'm late this year, I'm late this year. Shit. But finally, I'm doing my top 10 movies to watch during October, no, Halloween month. Shit, it froze. Oh, okay. I hate when it does that. Confuse me! Stop confusing me. Okay, but anyways. I'm just gonna keep going when it freezes. But anyways, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. I know last year I did it earlier in the year, but this time, later, because I couldn't get done to later, but you know. I can only do what I can do, you know. <laughs> so, I tried, but. Um, this time I can't put the trailers in the background like I did last time. But I found some creepy ass shit to put in, put in the background for ambiance. So I'll put that on now. No music, it's just video. And I don't know what I don't know what it is, but it's something. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna get on with this list. First of all, my honorable my honorable mentions as always. Um first I'm gonna bring up uh Golden Years came out in 1991. It is a is a mini series by Stephen King. Premiered on television. I have no idea who the fuck's in it because it's been a while since I've seen it. But hopefully this. I think it was on the list last year. I don't know. I hope not. But I'm putting it on here anyways. But what it is is this old janitor guy is like in the school or not in the school, but in this place. It's like a it's like a chemical place or something. This mad scientist does an experiment and he gets hit by it and he starts like glowing green and he starts getting younger and stuff and people notice and they send out this guy that's like really good at killing people to go kill him but he has to run away from him but he gets help from the guy's old assistant who's not like on his level but like kind of like kind of good so she helps him and some other dude and they're him and his wife are pretty much on the run from this guy, and he's getting younger, and other crazy shit starts happening. It's a good, it's a good miniseries. It is really good. It's a very underrated King thing. It's very underrated. Um, I, I say check it out. It's very, very underrated. Um, I didn't put it on the list because, well, it's more of a thriller, like most of these you'll see. Next one uh, for honorable mentions is The Final Girls, 2015. It has Nina Dobrev, um, Thaisa Farminga from American Horror Story, um, and that funny guy from Deadpool. Um, he plays Weasel. I don't know his name, but he's funny. Um, he's funny in this too. Um, he's also in the in the other movie Fun Size. He's in Fun Size, and he's in a few other movies. But yeah, um, Final Girls is pretty much a parody of the horror films, but with heart. Um, what happens is this girl's mother dies. Shit, I'm not showing you the creepy shit. This girl mother dies, and she she's a famous movie star. So they go to see the movie on the anniversary of her death. The daughter does with a few of her friends, and they get trapped inside the movie. And then hilarity and just heart from there it's a very heartful movie it's very funny it's not really creepy but it's very funny it's a good parody of genre but there's a lot of heart in that movie surprisingly it took me by surprise on how much heart there is in that movie like that shit shit that took me by surprise man but it's not on the list because obviously it's more funny than scary so yeah next is rocky horror picture show the 1975 original version do not watch the 2016 version. It is horrible. I watched that shit just as an experiment, and it was horrible. It was. It, it's more horrible than this guy in the wheelchair. Here. Um. But anyways, yeah, the original starring Tim Curry, Meatloaf, Richard O'Brien, Patricia Quinn, Susan Sarandon, those people. That's the movie you want. That's the movie you want. Now, it's not really a scary movie, but it's, like, creepy. It's got a creepy vibe to it. It's very, it's very Halloween-ish. It's very Halloween-ish. It's very out there. It's very, it's a very outgoing movie. And it's just crazy. It's craziness 
but I love it. It just, it's just insane. Uh, there's no real way to describe this movie. It's just an experience. You have to watch. It's just, it's just an experience in itself. So yeah. And my final honorable mention, so we can get on to the list, is The Good Neighbor. And The Good Neighbor came out in 2016 as James Can in it. James Con. James Con. Con. No, no, not spelled like Con from Star Trek. I can't even do it right. Con! No, no, I can't do it right. But anyways, yeah. Oh fuck! This, this shit on the screen is getting intense. Apparently, getting real intense. But anyways, um, sorry guys if I'm freaking you out with this shit. I don't. I've never seen this video before. But yeah, back to the list. Um, fucking the good neighbor is a thriller. It's more of a thriller than a horror, that's why it's on the list. It's about these two guys that, like, two teenagers that set up cameras in this old guy's house that's supposedly an asshole and may or may not have murdered his wife. And, shit. And he, like, so they set up these cameras in this house and they set up, like, these devices to, like, haunt him. And they're, like, trip wires and shit and they were gonna haunt him and that's the whole idea is they're haunting him as an experiment. And... It's really fucked up. It's it's a really fucked up thriller movie. And this guy, he has like something in his basement. He keeps going down in his basement for like hours on end. He keeps the basement's only room in the house locked. So the guys are like, what's in the basement? Because they think this old guy's like crazy and shit. Well, they're doing these experiments on him and watching him like all the like 24 hours through these cameras and haunting him. They think he's the crazy one. And just throughout the movie, pe people's true colors are shown. And it's just a really good thriller film. So that's why I put it on the honorable mentions. I think it's creepy enough for people that want to watch during Halloween, but they don't want a full-on horror movie. This is a good psychological thing that you can really get into. Um, it's really good. Look up The Good Neighbor. 2016. 2016. Okay. You guys ready for the list? You guys ready for the list? It froze again, but I'm just going to keep talking and hopefully it unfreezes and goes back to where it was. But yeah, um... Starting at number 10, we have Sorority Row 2009, starring Leah Pipes, Jamie Chung, and Matt Lantern. And the legend, Carrie Fisher. Yes, Carrie Fisher's in this fucking movie, man. And she wields a fucking shotgun. Now, why this is low on the list is I don't think it's really as good as the other ones. But, it's a, it's a really good movie. It's about this, like, sorority house. And they pull a prank on this one guy. This one, one of their members' brothers. But in, in the middle of the prank, someone actually dies. So they, like, cover it up and they throw the body in a well. And years later, someone with a tire iron, which was actually used to kill the person. That was the weapon used to kill the person accidentally in the prank. You gotta watch it to actually understand, but, um, this person comes up with a tire iron that he had, that they have on, like, this, like, rope, and they're, like, swinging it, and they're, they, like, murder, it's so unique, because sometimes the person, like, throws it, but he can pull it back because it's on a rope, or sometimes he throws it, but at one point he had it on a rope, it's some crazy shit, this is, like... But, yeah, and they're trying to figure out, is it the brother that they pranked, or is it someone else? Is it this other, uh, is it the girl back from the grave, or what's going on here? And it's a really good movie. The acting's really great. Like I said, you have Carrie Fisher with a shotgun, going around, um, dealing with motherfuckers, being a badass. Sorry, it just got dark. Oh, here we go, here's something. Just Carrie Fisher just being a badass, and... Oh, shit. I don't even... What the fuck? Guys, I, I'm putting on some nightmare fuel right now. Oh, shit. But, yeah. Sorority Row, 2009. It's really good. It's better than I thought it was going to be. It's really, really good. Everybody does good acting. The deaths are good. Um, Leah Pipes plays a really good bitch. I never thought Leah Pipes could play a bitch after seeing her on the original. She plays Camille, and Camille's so nice. Camille's so sweet. Yeah, Camille got bitchy in the first season, but she's so nice and so sweet. Then you just see her in this movie, and you're like, that's a total bitch. Like, Jesus. Number nine, True for Dare. 
And before you jump on my ass, this is not the 2018 version. This isn't the one that just came out. This is the one from last year, 2017, starring Cassandra Skirbo and a bunch of other people I don't know. This is the superior one, in my, in my opinion. The new one sucks, because the new one does the whole, Oh, you died, we make silly faces! <laughs> you gotta pass it along to survive! <laughs> I'm like, what? No. This one, is these, this, these people go to this house, and they stay in the house, and they play Trooper Dare in the house after years, years before Trooper Dare was played, and there was only one survivor, and everybody died of the game. So they play Trooper Dare in the house, and then shit gets real, man. Shit gets real. The house starts revealing their secrets. He starts, they start making him do some crazy shit. And the, and the thing about this I love is that there's actually a way to beat it. If they work together, they can beat it, and they figure out a way, like, to overcome some of the challenges. And there's a doctor that, like, helps them, and he, like, tells them, like, you could do this. Like, this one guy, not to spoil, but he has to grab, like, some wires. Oh, we're going to be watching Saddle of Fingers in a minute. This guy grabs some wires, right? And, um... The guy's like, you grab the wires, but right before you, you grab the, you gotta grab wires, right? But you do that. This guy's gonna run at you with towels, so you grab the, you grab the wires right when he's about to connect with you. And he's gonna tackle you with the towel, so you don't really get, like, electrocuted too bad. And that, that's shit I like. Like, they figured out a way that they could work together to beat it. And I like that. It's like, kind of like Final Destination. You have this, like, almost unstoppable force, but then... With all these rules and shit. But then you can figure out there's a way to beat it. That's why I love. I love unstoppable forces that can be beat. That's why I kind of don't like Final Destination 3. Because they kind of stop with that rule. But yeah. the Why this movie's so low. Is because of the fucking ending man. Now this movie has some very brutal scenes. This movie has some crazy shit. But the ending is just fucking bullshit. I don't. And it's still good. But what they do with it is just wrong. They sh you should not do that to people. Just fucked up. Fucked up. You gotta, you gotta see the ending. It's fucked up. Next. And this might be... I don't know if this is a cop out. I don't think it is. This number eight is 1931's Dracula. With Boris Karloff. How can you go wrong with this movie? How can you go wrong with the original Dracula? You can't. Just the movements of Boris Karloff of Dracula are just creepy at long... The, the black and white makes the contrast of the shadows and everything just more creepier. Dracula's mansion is terrifying. I think, and I think what makes it more terrifying than ever is the fact that it's in black and white. And just the fact that Boris Karloff plays Dracula so perfectly. And just this movie is just a classic. Why is it low on the list? Because I just, everybody knows this fucking movie. Of course, there are movies above that everybody knows as well, but I just, I don't know. I just thought I'd put it lower on the list just to kind of surprise you. <laughs> and I just wanted to see how many people w would complain about in the comments. Like, I want to see if people will actually complain about this in the comments. Like, Dracula is so low in the list. Why isn't Dracula higher? Why isn't Dracula higher? Well, well, because I don't want it to be higher. What the fuck? Jesus, what did I put on the background? Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah! That's a little scary. That's fucking... That's not cool. Oh my god! I did not expect that. I thought I put some creepy shit in the background, but nothing like that. That was disturbing. Why did that thing have a dildo as a nose? Anyways, um... Sorry, guys. Back to what we're doing. Number seven, Cabin in the Woods, 2012. I don't even know what to think now. But, yeah, um, Cabin in the Woods, it's the, it's one of the greatest monster movies, in my opinion, of all time. Besides the classics, of course, but this has, like, every single monster you can think of. Now, the synopsis is, um, a bunch of, uh, people go to this house... You go to this cabin in the woods, but there's this, like, secret organization trying to take them out with monsters and shit. And it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's got Chris Hemsworth in it. 
And it's just this really great movie of survival. It's a really great show off of monsters. It's just a really good parody of the horror style while still remaining as a horror movie. It like parodies the genre, but while remaining a horror movie and not a horror comedy. Because I do not see this as a horror comedy. I see this as a full-on horror movie. And this came out in 2012. And yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, and now I hopefully the skips aren't like removing what I'm saying. Now we got at number six, Brain Damage, 1988. Now Brain Damage is very unique to me. It's a very cool, kind of funny, but very horrific movie about this parasite named Almer who um la uh, latches onto this kid named Brian, the back of his back, and he like injects him with drugs. So Brian goes on a drug trip every time he goes outside with Elmer. He goes on a drug trip and he sees all these colors. Well, Elmer goes around uh, sucking people's brains out. Like, that's what Elmer does, is he eats brains. And Elmer goes around and sucks people's brains out. Oh shit, sorry guys. Well, well, Brian's on this drug trip. And I like it. Elmer can talk too. Elmer has like the coolest voice. That's why the reason is the reason why I love this. The puppetry of this movie is so great. Uh, and Elmer is fantastic. I'll be right back guys. Okay, we're good. Sorry guys, there wasn't as many skips in the last one. But this one will be a full one, I promise. I promise I will upload this in full. But anyways, um... Yeah, and... Elmer is just... The puppetry on him is perfect. The voice is great. I can't really do it, but I will try. Brian. Do you want to see the lights, Brian? Brian. Put me on your back, Brian. Put me on the... Put me in the hole, Brian. You can see the colors, Brian. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Brian. Don't you want to see the colors, Brian? It's just crazy movie. It's really good. Really good movie. Um, Number five, The House October Built 1 and 2. The first one came out in 2014. I don't know when the second one came out. And I don't know who's in this shit. But... Pretty much, the first one's about a group of people in an RV, and they travel around the country looking for the best haunted house, and along the way, they run into a group called the Blue Skeletons, and creepy shit starts happening, and the sequel takes off from where the first one starts off, from where the first one ends, which I can't really get into that without spoiling, so I will not get into that, but let's just say it did crazy shit, guys, crazy shit. But man, this is just a celebration of Halloween. There's there's Halloween all over this movie. And this movie is awesome. It's like laid back, chill, until the very end. There's like creep factors put in for most of it. But some of it's like house scares and stuff. And then you get like a look into the like haunted houses and stuff. It's just a real, really fun movies. Really fun movies. Uh, I'll, I will give them the check out. Definitely. Number four. Burnt Offerings, 1976. Now, Burnt Offerings is like a classic haunted house movie with a twist. It stars Karen Black. Um, I thought the acting in this movie is good. Why this movie is number four is I think it's like one of the best, one of the best haunted house movies I've seen. Probably by the twist at the end with what, like what the house is doing and why the house does what it does. And it has some really good creepy imagery. It's got some really good metaphoric stuff. Um, it's just really good. Really good symbolism. That's why I meant. Not metaphoric. Symbolism. And yeah, I'll give it a check out. Burn Offerings, 1976. And Karen Black is amazing as always. As you know, Karen Black has been in plenty of horror movies. Um, damn, I can't remember this. It wasn't she in The Howling? I know she was in The Howling. And she was in Rob Zombie's um, House of a Thousand Courses and Devil's Rejects. But I'm pretty sure she was in The Howl Howling too, as well. Not Howling too, but you know, The Howling. That's a really good movie. I should put that down next year. 
But anyways, yeah, um, that is really good. It's worth the check out. Burnt Offerings. Really good haunted house movie. It's crazy how these people are infected and stuff by the house and what the house does. And like I said, it's great symbolism, great score, everything. Number three, the original Psycho 1960. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. This is this is really psycho as well. But yeah, um, what can I say? This movie is is a classic, man. Norman Bates. And the thing is, it starts out like a thriller. It starts out like a thriller. You don't know it's going to be a horror movie. But then it turns into a horror movie as you go on. And our, our main, well, one of our main ladies uh, for the, like, first um, segment of the movie, Janet Lee, a.k.a. the mother of Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Janet Lee, I don't know if her last name's Curtis or not. I'm pretty sure it's not, but, um, yes. Janet Lee does a great job in this movie. The guy that plays Norman Bates does a great job. As soon as you get to Bates Motel, like I said, it starts out like a thriller, like this woman robs his cash, and she takes off, and then when you get, but when you get to the hotel, that's when it starts getting horror vibes, and you start feeling off, especially when you're in Norman Bates' office, and you really don't really know shit about him yet. But then there's like taxidermy over the walls and he's talking about, yeah, I'd like to do taxidermy. That's like a good hobby. A boy should always have a hobby. And then he's like, a boy's best friend is his mother. And it's just really creepy. That's why I bought his number three. I know it's cliche and I know the second one's going to be cliche, but you know what? I don't care. I don't care. But yeah, number three, Psycho. Give it a check out if you haven't. And if you haven't, why the fuck haven't you not? Come on, it may be in black and white, but I say the black and white made it better. Because the shadows and the contrast, you gotta look at the shadows and the contrast, it just made it all creepier. The contrast of the shadows, I say black and white makes horror movies actually creepier. Because if you look at the shadows and the contrast of shit, and, like, you get what I'm saying, right? But yeah, if you look at all the shadow contrast and all that, and, like, how you can see their shadows as they walk across the floor and shit. Especially with, like, I didn't mention this earlier, but with, like, Dracula, when he does his shadows, you can see, like, him doing his creepy movement, but then you can see his shadow doing the creepy movement, too. And I think that just makes it creepier. But, yeah. On to number two. The Shining. 1980. What can I say about this movie? Now, this is Kubrick's version, not King's version. I know King hated Kubrick's version, and he liked, um, he made his own version. That might be on a lot of list, but what can I say about this movie? Man, this movie's like the, like, almost perfect. Pretty much perfect. It's got great, great setting, great pacing, great way of organizing events, great, like, uh, cinematography, great camera angles, the creepiness, like you might, great acting from Nicholson and Shelley Duvall, now I'm going to talk about when Danny is riding around those corners of the hotel and they got that music in the background, the great score, this movie has a great ass score and he's like doing his tricycle and he's like duh, 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 duh. and they got that creepy music in the background, you can see the carpet and you might think this, if that music was not there and they didn't have those angles like that and they didn't have that like stuff in the background, you wouldn't think those carpets were really that creepy. But th th those carpets are creepy as fuck, man. Those carpets are really creepy as fuck is how they present it. And just Jack Nicholson, man, just blows it out of the park as always. Um, Jack, he's such a great actor. He's really good at playing crazy people. It kind of makes me concerned. Kind of makes me concerned for his well-being, you know, because he played the Joker, he played, um, Buddy from fucking Anger Management. <laughs> if you haven't seen that movie, it's not a horror movie, it's a comedy, but fucking Jack Nicholson in that movie, oh my god. What the fuck? <laughs> no. But yeah, Jack is like, what can I say about this movie? It's just fucking, it's fucking amazing. But yes, there is a there is a King version, and maybe that'll be on the list next year. Who knows? I just decided to put Kubrick's version this year. But yeah, um, The Shining. If you haven't seen it, why the fuck haven't you seen it? You, you should have seen it by now. But anyways, unless if you're a child. Then I don't recommend watching this if you're a child. Un unless um, you really want to. But if you do, 
Um, please, if you have a YouTube channel, just uh, put on some headphones and just put a camera on your face so I can so you can upload it and then email me so I can see your reaction and then you can cuss me out and stuff for introducing me to this introducing you to this movie. Or you'll just disappoint me and have balls of steel and, like, watch the whole thing. But hopefully you'll be terrified. But, um, yeah. The Shining. And number one, which is going to piss a lot of people off. Like I said, this is the second list I did. I did a list last year. So I can't put the same movie on the list twice. Except for Golden Years. I think I did that. But, you know, Golden Years is very obscure. So who gives a shit? I, I, it deserves a second shot up. I don't know what this fucking creepy guy's talking about. But anyways. Nine more days to Halloween. 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 Nine more days to Halloween. Silver Shamrock. Yes, it's Halloween 3, guys. Number one is Halloween 3. Season of the Witch. Get over it. It's a Halloween film. It always has been a Halloween film, and it always will be a Halloween film. Get the fuck over it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to say that to the haters. I have to say that to the haters of this film. Now, this film is amazing, guys. This is an amazing horror film. The only problem with it is it's a Halloween film without Michael Myers. But besides that, it's an amazing horror film. You got a great villain, a very convoluted but crazy plot involving Easter Island. Come on. Come on. The fucking things from Easter Island are in this shit. Like, how can you not get over this? A mask, a very, very generic mask that are, are extremely popular for some reason that they sell the children to wear during a commercial on Halloween night instead of trick-or-treating that will murder them. It's like, what the fuck? Crazy shit. And you got the, you got robots, you got fucking insanity. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. You should check it out if you've never seen it. 1982, guys. 1982, Season of the Witch. And it gave us the best theme song ever that I have been annoying people with all Halloween long. Who said I still don't troll? <laughs> Who said I still don't troll? That is kind of trolling right there. When you find the most annoying theme song on the planet... And then you start saying it in people's chats. That, that, that's kind of trolling. But that's the only trolling I'm really doing. Besi besides Paul. I gotta troll Paul. Come on. Ooh. Paul's so trollable. And he loves it. So anyways, yeah. Halloween 3. And come on. You gotta admit that Halloween 3 has the best villain clap. Come on. I'm, I'm gonna flip this because this is the end of the list. Can I flip the camera? No, I can't flip the camera. Damn it, what is, what is it? Ooh, I can change the monotone. No, I'm not doing that. But anyways, yeah, uh... Halloween... So, guys, like, I'm just gonna say this now, this list is my opinion. Do you have your opinion of great horror films? Great. But, yeah, um... I'm done here. This was part two to the top ten movies to watch during October slash Halloween. I don't know what the fuck I'll name it. I'll name it something. But anyway, yeah, um, I'm sorry I'm late. But, you know, I did it when I can and now it's done. You got a creepy guy talking in a coat. Doesn't get better than that. But anyways, talking about Garfield, I don't even know... This is just random, guys. I didn't even know that Garfield was going to show up in this, but Garfield has made an appearance. I got a cameo from Garfield, guys, in my half an hour video that nothing really happened in. So, yeah, um, I'm going to end this, guys. I'm going to end this. Um, I'll have a couple more Halloween videos out, maybe tomorrow or maybe today. Um, I'll have a couple more coming out and shit. But anyways, yeah, you guys... Have a nice day. Stay frosty. And remember, this list is my opinion. So don't come and murder me for stuff not being on the list. Or stuff. Or Halloween 3 being the best. But if you do, uh, put it down in the comments. And then I'll reply with you back and we can fight in the comments if you want. We can have an argument in the comments. 
I will debate you why Halloween 3 deserves to be Halloween... Deserves that top one list on this movie list. I will debate you, and I will debate you why it should be a Halloween movie. I will do that shit. But anyways, okay, bye everyone. Stay frosty. This is Trenchy signing off. Beep, bop, boop.